12th hit batter of the season for Tiger. Petrie's a sophomore from Land Lakes, Florida. For his first hit of the series, drive in a run earlier this afternoon. One and one the count, 90 from Tiger. That's belted to left, but pulled foul. One and two the count on the All-American Petri. Cena takes his lead off first. It's grounded foul. Back-to-back -back breaking balls there from Tigert on Petri. Let's see if he tries to climb the ladder here with the fastball up. Opponents 203 so far this season against Tigert. Tiger does just that. Fastball there elevated on the outer half, and Petri continues to struggle a little bit this weekend. Just not seeing the ball very well. That's a, a hittable pitch, maybe out of the strike zone, but that's a pitch we've seen. You see Petri just a tick late there. The timing's just a little bit off. Parker Nolan's at the plate. This will allow Messina to take second. He's got away from Roland. So Messina in scoring position, an early RBI opportunity for Parker Noland, who's driven in three in this series. And 278, three homers, 24 runs batted in. Pitch outside. We've got Nolan's at the plate, Kip, and Parker Rowland, that catcher for Arkansas. So that'll be fun. Nolan's rolling. <laughs> yeah. Both Parkers. Parker Nolan's grounds that foul. Had a huge two out, two run single in the sixth earlier this afternoon. The Gamecocks a 6-2 lead. They would hold on to win 6-3. He was on base four times earlier today. A couple singles, a couple of walks for Noland. He was ahead in the count, 3-1. Count has run full. Seven World Series appearances, still searching for their first national title. Came really close back in 2022. One out away and just couldn't get it, get it done. But boy, this team is just always plays great defense, pitches extremely well. Their hitting so far in the SEC is is, is definitely down right now, and that's the thing that. But you know, good pitching and defense keeps you in a lot of games, and obviously them being the number two team in the country. I think it's just a matter of time before they break out with their bats. We have Kendall Diggs at the plate currently. Diggs one for seven in the series. So it's inside, count evens at two and two. Strikes out Diggs, first strikeout for Dylan Eskew. Good 
change up there from Eskew. Only you don't see the inside change up to, to lefties from the right-hander, but he may have just cut that one a little bit, but still a good pitch. Good arm action there. Looked like a fastball coming out of his hand. His last start was in the midweek win over North Carolina on April 9th. He tossed three and a third scoreless in that one. Three of his last four appearances have been in relief. Start in the finale this afternoon. Nolan Sousa at the plate. Freshman from Hawaii. And for his first hit of the series, he's 0 for 7. Has scored a run. Grounded to short. Gobbled up by Ellis. Casas unable to stay on the bag, so Sousa will be safe at first. Going over from Ellis. We'll take another look. I thought Ellis sat back on that one. If he'd have charged that and gotten that big hop, I think it would have been better, but that wasn't that bad of a throw. I think that should be an E3 on Casas. Definitely a play he would tell you he should have made. The first error for South Carolina. Did not have an error earlier. This afternoon, I don't believe they had an error on Friday night either, Kit. It's no. The first error of the series for yeah, the Gamecocks. Yeah, it is. Maybe the first error of the series for either team. We've seen some very good plays defensively on both sides of the ball here. It's it's been a very good series. A two to one Friday night victory for for Arkansas and South Carolina wins game two six to three earlier today. Hey, you're right, first error of the series. It's been a very clean series. Peyton Holt at the plate. He's been excellent for Arkansas. Three for seven in the series. He scored the first run of the game earlier this afternoon. Also walked a couple of times, been hit by a pitch. Missing outside, two and two, the count on Holt. Senior from Greenwood, Arkansas. The last season started 19 of 31 games played, hit 392. Delivers when he gets the opportunity. Did he go? No. This is Danny Cricks over at first. It's a full count on Holt. To send Sousa here, Kip? Yeah, I would. We haven't seen that much, though. Look out. Holt gets hit. Neither team really runs much, but if I'm Coach Dave Van Horn, you know, only scoring two runs Friday and then three today. I'd be doing something to try to get, ignite the off. Lovich, 281 hitter, two homers, 15 runs batted in. Transfer from Missouri. CSQ, when he does struggle with his command, he usually misses arm side. See there, that amount of movement he's got. He's got a really good two-seam fastball, but he's just cutting himself off, not getting a good extension out front. You gotta really reach out there. When that ball's gonna move that much, you've gotta really stick it and throw it through your target, get that late life. See, that that ball's moving out of his hand, Dave. It's right. just, it's just, he's just kind of, not sidearming it, but just not getting out front, getting on top of the ball. He's gotta throw it through his target 
and that'll create later life, which is much more difficult for the hitter to pick up and square up as well. Nice See there, strike. that was good extension there. And he's got such a good sinker right here. I come right back with it, even in a 3-1 count. Try to induce that ground ball. Get him out of the inning. Instead, it's ball four. And Arkansas has the bases loaded with one down. And no hits, an error, a hit by pitch, and a walk. It is clean of as a weekend we've seen. Now, we did see a lot of walks on Friday, but I haven't seen the error, and we made an error here in the first batter, or excuse me, second batter of the inning. Should have been the second out. This is Jack Wagner. Ground ball to short, to second for one, on a first. The throw is high. And Wagner will be safe at first. Souza scores. And Arkansas takes the lead, 1-0. Watching it live, I thought Casas may have tagged him there. I think we're going to see a review. Maybe he didn't. From that view, it looked like he missed. Yeah, it did. Pulling on the field is confirmed. Runner safe at first base. Has one challenge remaining. Oh, there's the answer. There's answer that was yeah. South Carolina's challenge. Casas did all he could. Came down with it. Really surprised at that. They've got as good a view as anybody over there. Just hate to waste a challenge that early in the game if it's if you're not going to be right. Well, it's runners at the corners, two down. Parker Rowland. Get past Reeves. Holt will score. The Razorbacks lead 2 0. Like a slider there. A wild pitch from Eskew. Two runs for Arkansas and no hits. Roland, the backup catcher, senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Having his eighth start of the season. Fly ball, left field, Jones. It's off the top of the wall. And Roland head first into second. Big half inning for Arkansas. That's a good piece of hitting there. Fastball out over the plate. That ball had some backspin on it just off the top of the wall. And the Gamecocks are kicking themselves in the foot right now. That This is all self-induced. Definitely should have been out of the inning. RBI double for Roland. That's his first ribby of the season. Peyton Stovall grounded out his first time up. It's on grounds to Casas. It's a slick play. Yeah, that's always the goal around here at South Carolina. In the Super Regionals last year, didn't make it. Ran into a buzzsaw getting the draw with at Florida. They had swept them in the regular season. It's tough to be a team as good as Florida anytime, but let alone after you've already swept them in the regular season. That was a tough draw. Again, Cots ended up losing that series to Florida. Florida. Made it to the College World Series Championship. Jones flies out to right and one down. Now to bring up Dalton Reeves. 
Starting all three games of this series. Got the start in the first two games, a designated hitter. Start behind the plate in game three. He's looking for his first hit of the series. Over six. Has walked and has a sacrifice as well. Fouls that off. Two and one now the count on Reeves. Tiger had his first loss of the season last Sunday at Alabama. Deserved a better fate though. Five innings, five hits, just one run. A couple of walks and three strikeouts, 87 pitches, received no run support. Alabama shut out the Razorbacks in that one. His season high is six innings. Which is the case, Kip, with their entire rotation. Yeah, what makes it so tough with Ty Gard is, is just the way he pitches all of his arsenal. I mean, he's throwing the cutter, the change up, overhand breaking ball. You see there, he just, wow, where that missed. But, uh, you know, Reeves just not knowing what's coming. And uh, it's, everything's coming from the same arm slot as well. That's ball four. One out walk for Dalton Reeves. Mentioned the season high is six innings. They were six shutout innings against Oklahoma State back in February. The season high in pitches 87 against McNeese on March 9th. Out. Yeah. The starters don't go deep. Even Hagen Smith, who's terrific, is going to be a very high draft pick, only went six. Van Horn wants to save those innings for May and June. Want to know the count on Lee Croy? Yeah. One and one. Chasing, it's one and two. Lee Croy one for six in this series. Hit was a big one though, a two run single to open up the scoring earlier this afternoon. Bites that one off. Junior from Belton, Ian Petri, the only two Gamecocks to start every game this season. Stovall to second for one on a first. Four, six, three, double play. Now they'll retire the Gamecocks in the bottom. Dynamic. I mean, he was as good as advertised, 11 strikeouts. Up to 99 with his fastball, uh, just uh, uh, just a really good slider. I mean, maybe the best I've seen this season. Grounded to Casas, take care of it himself. One down in the top of the third. First two innings, Dylan Eskew had 31 pitches, 16 for strikes. Let down by his defense in the top of the second. It's only given up one hit. The Razorbacks lead 3 0. Number three hitter at the plate, Vihiva Aloy. He's their top power threat, 276 hitter, nine homers, 36 runs batted in. He's in the hole 0 2.
Rounded up the middle. Ellis is there. Dylan Eskew is at his best kit. This is what you see. Weak grounders in the infield. Yeah, and that ball looked as if it was out over the plate. Thought Alloy would be able to get a, the barrel on it there, but he got jammed again. That's two at-bats in a row. You see Eskew's fastball up to 94 today. He has one strikeout so far. It was the man at the plate, Kendall Diggs. That was in the top of the second. Diggs, a preseason first team All SEC selection. Finished second team All SEC last year. Numbers not quite as good this season. Dealing with a shoulder issue. Average at 255, six homers, 23 driven in. He's a 299 hitter a year ago. Led the team and runs bat in with 63. Double digit homers also last season. He had 12 of those. A couple of grand slams. It really was a breakout season for Diggs. Because as a freshman in 2022, he hit just 197. Popped up, foul territory. Lee Croy gives it a look and makes the play. A one box starting with Gavin Casas. It's that deep to right. Diggs back in front of the wall will make the play. Long out off the bat of Casas, one down. Talking about how good Kentucky's been this season. See Kentucky next week here at Founders Park. First game of that series will be on SEC Network Plus, and then the following two will be on SEC Network. Really big series. Every series in the SEC is a big one. At number two in town this weekend. Another top five team next weekend. Close the regular season at Tennessee. Yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a gauntlet. I mean, there's a reason they call it that. It's uh, I mean, week in week out. I mean, I can remember. Of course, it's been 20 plus years now, which is amazing. But you know, Vanderbilt was not a very good program at the time, and that was usually a a weekend where that was about the only team there in the SEC that you could feel pretty good about winning two out of three or sweeping. Now it's just no matter who you play, you can't. There's not any team that you can take lightly in the league. It makes it very difficult. One and two, the count on the number nine hitter Lee Ellis, the freshman from White Plains, Maryland. Ryan foul. Ellis did not play. Last night, got the start earlier this afternoon. Went one for three with a walk. And a run scored. Ellis in there because Will Tidbit Kip was hit by a pitch last night in the head. Certainly hope he's all right. Yeah, I hope so too. That was definitely a scary moment. I hit pretty hard. You know, it doesn't take much, but I mean, obviously he had the helmet on, but it was a hit by pitch, and I think if I remember correctly, it was 94. It was, it was a hard one. Tiger gets Ellis. Third strikeout for Brady Tiger. That's that high spin rate curveball. Coach Van Horn talked about that ball's just dropping off the table there. Expanded the zone on Ellis with two strikes. Big second out inning. Or excuse me, second out of the inning there. Tartus is cruising. 
Last season he made 10 appearances, six starts, missed some time with an injury. Put up good numbers, three and one with a 3.20 ERA. And opponents hit just 167 against Tiger. His force starts in SEC play last year. He was 1-0 with a 1.80 ERA. Opponents hit 094 mm. against him. That's crazy. I mean, that's high school numbers. He's your number three pitcher on the weekend until you got deep the staff is. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. His start against South Carolina last season was short. He tossed three shutout innings, just one hit, no walks, four Ks, 37 pitches. And then Will McIntyre went the next six in relief, and the Gamecocks got to him for three runs and won the game three to one on seven shutout innings from Jack Mahoney. Two out walk for Brindling. Second walk issued by Tiger. And we got Brindling at first now with a right-handed pitcher up. We, you know, Brindling can run a little bit. Let's see if Mark Kingston puts him in motion here. Although you got Messina up, if he hits a double in the gap, Brindling should be able to score easily. Oh, then. Has one stolen base. I'm sorry, kid. He's been picked off, though, each yeah. of the last two games. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. Mark Kingston may not want to do anything here because he's been picked off twice. He takes his lead. Want to know the count on Messina. And then does have excellent speed. Stole 20 of 22 last season for University of North Florida. Led the Ospreys in steals. Roland trots out to the mound. In this one, they should move up in those rankings. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if South Carolina can come back and win this game, Dave, I mean, I, I think you got to have them in your top 15 easy. Their strength of schedule is uh, very, very good, and it's been a this would be their, what, fifth top five win if they could win this game today. Oh, they got their fifth. Oh, they got their fifth, afternoon. right. Yeah. You're right. They swept Vandy, and then they had one in the finale against A&M. Took the middle game in this series. Five top three wins. Wow. We'll see what Kentucky comes in ranked next weekend. You play this SEC schedule and the opportunities are there. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's it's definitely the best in baseball and it's where all the high recruits want to go and they get a chance to play with the best. And well, you are tested week in, week out. Cena goes the other way, foul ball. Cole is hit by a pitch in the first. Two for eight in this series. He's also walked a couple of times. Brindling leads off first. He's going to be putting a tough at bat on Tiger. Freshman All-American back in 2022. He was pitching out of the pen that season. He led the team with eight saves. Once again, the 2-2. That's a fair ball. Pass Souza. Brindling racing around third. He's coming home. Safe. Messina into third. The Gamecocks are on the board. They trail three to one. Well, Messina just a great at bat there and hooks that one down the third base line. And Brindling is just scored from first to third on a ground ball that gets past the third baseman. What hustle there. 
We well, talk about coming in and making an impact, Dave. He has certainly done that in this Gamecock lineup. That speed, a weapon. Petri, right back to Tiger. Throw was low at first. Stretch from McLaughlin to retire Petri. The Gamecocks are on the board. An RBI double from Cole Messina. He advanced on the throw. Arkansas leads three to one. Playing two today in advance of tomorrow's expected rain. Temperatures are gonna drop kip as well. Yeah, as soon as you think spring is in full swing, it's uh, gonna be back to getting cool again. Nolan Souza at the plate. He reached on an error in the second and scored a run. Arkansas has three runs on just one hit. There's hit number two. Into the gap. It's a double for Sousa. He's on base for the second time in this game. What good pitch. Piece of hitting there, inside outs it. Puts the motors on and you know, it wasn't that bad of a pitch there by Eskew. And you know, even though they didn't get but one run, South Carolina wants to put up a zero here to try to keep a little bit of that momentum that they gained back after getting that one run. That was an exciting play, a great at bat by Messina and uh, scoring from first Brindling, that was just, Incredible speed he showed there. Free eye opportunity for Peyton Holt. He was hit by a pitch in the second, scored a run. He scored on a wild pitch. Average now at 333, a homer and nine driven in. Holt was playing second base when Stovall was hurt. Stovall came back. Thought he might go back over to third. Easy for Casas. One down. He's played some third in this series, played third earlier this afternoon. Did hold, he played left field. In game one, he's in center field in this game. Wherever they can put him, just keeping that bat in the lineup, because he's done a lot of damage against South Carolina. Roslovich at the plate. Susan now at third. Lovich walked in the second. Infield is in for South Carolina. Yeah, one out. I mean, it's, it's early in the game, but you've got a guy that induces a lot of ground balls. So Mark Kingston being a little aggressive here, seeing if he can't get the runner at home on a ground ball in the infield. Pitches now for Eskew. Souza leads off third. Come on, baby. Grounded foul. Count evens at two and two on Ross Lovich. Transfer from Missouri. Two homers this season, one against McNeese, the other against his former team, Mizzou. Both three run shots. of that. Foul ball got a piece of Lovich. Home plate umpire will give Lovich a little bit of time. He was a good player at Mizzou the last three seasons there. 
Last season he hit 306, four homers, 20 runs batted in. Was an SEC player of the week last May. Hit for the cycle last season against Georgia, the first Missouri Tiger to hit for the cycle since 1995. Gamecocks didn't see him. He missed a month midseason last year and did not play in the South Carolina Mizzou series. Two two. Reeves throws down to first to complete the play. Big strikeout for Rescue. Well, that was a hard late breaking slider there from Eskew. Not quite sure what's going on now. Well, you know, umpires have such a difficult job. I mean, everything's second guessed all the time. I mean, they're they're trying to do their best. Obviously, they want to make the right call, and. Um, you know, it's one of those where you hope that they don't play scared, if you will, because it just seems as if no matter what they do, somebody's always going to complain. It's amazing. I watched yesterday as well as both games today. I should say last night, but a lot of Gamecock pitchers are not liking the ball they get. That's probably the 15th or 20th time they've gotten a ball back from the umpire, thrown it out. So... The umpires that rub these balls up before the series are sometimes you can get the the clubby or somebody to do that. Um, normally it's the umpire's job, but not really liking how they've been rubbed up. I don't know if they're not rubbed up enough or some may be a little slick. Not sure, but they're definitely not liking them. Slickness have anything to do with the temperature and the, the sweat? Yeah, it could be. I mean, it's, it's definitely a little bit humid, humidity in the air, and um, I used to like mine rubbed up a, a lot and um, get it as dark as possible. Wagner pops it up. Nolan takes care of Wagner. A lot of cheering going on as the Gamecocks held on to victory for a 6 3 win over Arkansas in game two. No doubt. It was a great game to watch. Yeah, it was. It was a, a very well-played baseball game, and this has been a good game so far. Gamecocks have kicked it around a little bit, uh, led to a couple runs in the second, but uh, another base hit. Oh, no, great play. It's still going to be a base hit, but great stop there by Alloy. Parker Nolan reach here with a single. Take another look. Second base side. Showing great range there. Just couldn't get it out of his glove. Not sure if he'd have been able to get enough on that throw, but for Nolan reaches again. Third hit of the series for Nolan. He's walked a couple of times as well. Continues to produce whether he's batting second, now batting fourth. Yeah, not your prototypical number four hitter. I think they're obviously wanting to protect Petri as much as possible. Kennedy Jones at the plate. Jones flew out to right field his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Tiger pitching with a three to one lead. We saw how good Hagen Smith was on Friday night. I asked Coach Van Horn where this pitching staff ranks. Keep with all the staffs that he's had. And he said, you know, I had a couple staffs in here that got three guys every weekend. It's more rare these days, but because of the depth that we have, this would be said, number one or number two for me, one of the top two. High praise because he's had a lot of good ones. There's strike three to Jones. He has. He's had a lot, a lot of good ones. There's that big overhand curveball from Tygaard and he just freezes Jones. So 
one on one down. Here's Dalton Reeves. Tiger, the underhand flip. Two away. Nolan advances to scoring position. See there, Reeves is late on the fastball again. I mean, it, it looks as if a couple of these Gamecock hitters, Reeves and Petri in particular, are just, they're a tick late. And it's, it's all about your timing and, and getting that front foot down and getting in a good hitter's position. And they're just a little bit off right now. Speed for a strike to Talmadge Lecroy. Bouncing to a double play his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Two out RBI opportunity with Nolan leading off second. Fly ball right field. Diggs. Tires Lecroy. Here at the end of the day. All those top three wins will certainly mean something. And the chance for their sixth this afternoon. Nine, one, and two due up for the Razorbacks, starting with Parker Rowland. Rowland's an RBI double his first time up for his first run batted into the season. Grounds to first, Casas in the backhand. Nice play to get it to Eskew. Casas has been busy in this one. Yeah, he has, that's such a good play. And, and the key there is he knows that the pitcher's coming over to cover first base in Eskew, but he gets rid of it early. He does a good job of throwing the sidearm throw over there to him, obviously accurate, but getting it to Eskew that way he can catch it and then find the bag instead of having to do both of those at the same time. Stole ball, deep center, Brindling to the track, two down. Sixty-one pitches now for Eskew. His season high is eighty. That was in the opener against Miami of Ohio. Opening series, I should say. Go six, come on, baby. Go six. The season high is five innings. It's one out away from matching that. First set to get through Ben McLaughlin. It was 0 for 2. Coughlin lined out in the first, grounded out in the third. 0 and 2 the count on the Arkansas first baseman. Stays alive. That's a big pitch for Eskew. The the slider into the lefties when he's throwing the sinker away and then coming back in, it's moving both directions. Coughlin in his second season at Arkansas. 21 starts last year at 346. A couple of homers and one of those was against South Carolina. Easy for Eskew. Finishes it off. Well, Mr. Miyagi style. 60 pitches for Tiger. Have to deal with eight, nine, and one. 40 of those pitches for strikes. This is 0 for 1. He flew out to right field his first time up. High fly ball left field, Lovich. One down.
Tigert's been pretty impressive so far. He's given up just one run on two hits. Getting his career in Arkansas as a closer. Transition to a starter last season. ZRA each of the last two years lower in SEC play, which is what's so impressive about Tiger. Ellis goes the other way. Diggs. And Ellis. A one out double here in the bottom of the fifth. That's a great piece of hitting by. Ellis, the fastball up out over the plate, does a good, great job of letting it get deep. Really good play there by Diggs, cutting it off and making the play a little bit closer at second base than I thought off the bat. Well, we saw his arm last night, he's got a cannon. First collegiate double for Lee Ellis. Runner in scoring position for Austin Brindling. Is 0 for 1. He flew out to center field in the first, walked and scored a run in the third. He got the start in center field last night and hit eighth. Rips that to right. Brinling. Drives in Ellis. It's an RBI double for the Gamecock center fielder. They're within one. That ball's tattooed. That almost went all the way to the wall in the air. been one earlier this afternoon. First game this doubleheader. It's another RBI in this one. Second ribby of the season for Austin Brindling. Now the tying run is at second. One down and Cole Messina do up. Cole's been on twice. He was hit by a pitch in the first. An RBI double in the third. Popped up. It's going to be a tough play. And Laughlin unable to get there. Seen will have another opportunity. Three for eight in this series. He's behind 0 and 2. Second on the team and runs batted in with 34. Double digit homers with 10. Let's pull the foul. Last home run was March 29th at Alabama. 17 a year ago. It was first team all SEC. Big strikeout for Tiger. He gets Messina. Two away. Yeah, well located pitch there. Fastball up after the slow breaking balls to start Messina off. Ethan Petri drops in for a strike. Tigers 
Tiger trying to hold on to a one run lead. Tying run at second, two down. Gets ahead of Petri, 0 and two. Yeah, he's just not seeing the ball very well right now either. His timing's off, but that very first pitch that Tigart threw to him, that's a pitch we see him hit out of the ballpark a lot. Just not seeing it. Tigart now is, knows that his day may be coming to an end. He's bringing it there. That was 92. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Tigard. He gets Messina and Petri. That'll do it for the Gamecocks in the bottom. He was getting ready to visit someplace else, and he called from the airport and committed. Cliff Van Horn said, you know, we had a great time with him. He was our type of guy, a good kid. On his visit, I said to him, are you going to let me coach you? And he said, yes, sir. And he's taking care of the ball at shortstop. Has a lot of power, can hit it out from one alley to the other. Coach Van Horn said he's streaky, but when he flips the switch, you can't get him out. Yeah, I've definitely seen him in those times that, that Coach Van Horn mentions. And your talk with him and uh, Aloy is just, uh, seems a little bit off this weekend. He's missed a, a lot of good pitches to hit. He's been jammed both times in his first two at-bats today against Eskew. Ellis goes back on it. The throw comes in on a hop. Filled it cleanly by Casas, one down. Well, I tell you, Casas, I know he, he hurt the Gamecocks in that second inning, but the amount of times that he scoops the ball over there and makes it look easy, that is not easy at all. That is a perfectly executed scoop there by Casas. Diggs goes the other way. This could drop in. It does. Double for Kendall Diggs. That's unfortunate there for Eskew. He really beat Diggs there, but the ball ends up hitting the warning track over there towards foul territory and going into the stands for a ground rule double. It's an RBI opportunity for the other Hawaiian, Nolan Sousa. We talked about Aloy. Sousa, Van Horn calls a, a tooled up dude. That was his term. Guy who can run, has a great arm, can hit for power. Freshman, he's gotten bigger since he's arrived in Fayetteville. Not sure that he'd help them this season, but he just kept getting better and better. In the hole, 0 and 2. Call strike three. Askew gets Souza. Front door sinker there. Askew starting it off at the right shoulder of Souza and running it back on the inner half. Great pitch there. Third strikeout for Dylan Askew. Now Peyton Holt. That's a base hit for Holt. Diggs rounds third. Throw from Petri. Diggs will score. Holt is on second. Tack on another one for Arkansas. They lead four to two. Boy, hard hit ball. Petri has a chance, does a good job coming in on it and making a throw here. You see him get outside the ball. It's a good throw. It's just a little bit too much of an in-between hop there for Reeves. If that ball bounces another foot or two shorter than it did, 
It's much easier play for him, but still a good throw from Petrie. They give Holt an RBI single, say he advanced on the throw. Roslovich. So South Carolina scores a run in the bottom of the fifth and Arkansas gets it back in the top of the sixth. Looking for more. Two on the count on Lovich. Overland Park, Kansas. Same hometown as Gamecock Carson Hornung. They attended different high schools. talent from Kansas on this Arkansas roster. Three and two the count now on Lovich. Askew trying to get through six. He's up to 80 pitches. Out walk for Lovich. Razorbacks have first and second. Jack Wagner due up. And Reeves will make a slow walk to the mound. Here comes Coach Williams. Rescue season high is found Tuesday in the midweek at the Citadel. Here's strike one to Jack Wagner. Wagner's 0 for 2. Does have a ribby on a fielder's choice in the second. Scored a run. 297 hitter. Three homers, 10 driven in. Block from Reeves. In that midweek on Tuesday, Pitzer went two and a third, four hits, a couple of runs, no walks, and a strikeout. Got his first collegiate save last Friday at Florida. The staff using him as a weapon. His first career start was March 24th against Vanderbilt. He was brilliant, six and a third, only three hits. Two runs, but neither of them were earned. A walk, nine strikeouts. Earned SEC Freshman of the Week. That's fell back. He retired the first 10 in order against the Commodores at four, one, two, three innings. Several very talented freshman arms for South Carolina. The one, two. Ellis charges. And retires Wagner. That'll do it for Arkansas. They'll leave two, but they get won the six to three game. And then now they're only down two here in the sixth inning against the number two team in the country. Parker Nolan is one for two. He struck out in the first, singled his last time up in the fourth. Tigered up to 77 pitches. Season high is 87. See if he lasts the sixth. That'll help. Nolan pleading his case. Here comes Coach Kingston. from Noland, one down here in the bottom of the sixth. That'll bring up Kennedy Jones. Jones 
Jones is 0 for 2. He flew out to right field in the second, struck out looking in the fourth. Average at 294, six homers, 26 runs batted in. Big cut, count evens at one and one. Jones last homered on April 6th against A&M. Others this season against Presbyterian, Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, Longwood, and Belmont. And home run against Belmont. It was a leadoff homer in the bottom of the first. It was his first start back on February 25th, and he's started every game since. Grounded to third, Sousa makes a nice play. That's Jones. That is not an easy play there. Don't know if that's going to be foul or fair. They, you tell the third baseman there, just go ahead and make the play no matter what. Let the umpire make the call. He does a good job of ranging over to his right. Getting the big hop. Firing a strike over to first base. Dalton Reeves with two down. Walked in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Grounds to second. Stovall. Quick one, two, three inning for Brady Tiger. We'll head to the seventh, the Razorbacks lead. Hits are on the mound in relief of Eskew. One of the talented freshmen for South Carolina. Coach Kingston talked about two of those freshmen in the post game last night, Kip, Marlott and McCoy. So they came in there in high leverage situations, didn't give up a run. Marlott did what he's been doing all year. They can match him up on righties. That's him at his best. And McCoy came in there to get the lefties. Coach Kingston said, I thought he had great stuff. Every time he's gone out there, he's gotten better. He has a really bright future. And Another star freshman on the mound right now in Pitzer. Yeah, they've got a lot of good freshman arms, and, and, and you're right, McCoy was, was electric for me. He, he showed some next level stuff for sure. Roland reaches a leadoff walk, the top of the seventh. Base runner for Peyton Stovall. We're gonna have a pinch runner for Roland. That's Will Edmondson. Which means we'll also have a new catcher for Arkansas. Bottom half of the inning. Edmondson got the start earlier this afternoon in center field. And 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. A little more speed now at first for Arkansas. Stova is 0 for 3. Grounded out in the first and the second, flat to center field in the fifth. Edmondson a stolen base threat. He's five for six. Lines up the middle and a base hit for Stovall. Edmondson will go first to third. And the Razorbacks are in business here in the seventh. say baseball is a game of inches if that ball is just a little bit further to the right side of the field that could be a double play the ball was certainly well hit now Arkansas looking to add to that two run lead here in the seventh they have been McLaughlin at the plate McLaughlin is 0 for 3 Reeves can't find it and here comes Edmondson. Razorbacks lead five to two. Wild pitch. 
pitch, scores Edmondson. Stovall advances to second. That's a tough play there. Late in the day, that ground's getting extremely hard. It's dried out, even though they do their best to the grounds crew here, I know, to keep that ball, that ground as soft as possible, but. Good breaking ball, just a little bit too much in the dirt there. Two on the count on McLaughlin. Came to Arkansas as a Juco All-American from Hutchinson Community College. Hey. Former two-way player, pitched in high school and in his freshman season in Hutchinson before tearing his UCL at Tommy John surgery. Last season, he came back to the mound for the first time at Arkansas, but only made three appearances. Just a hitter this season. Leaproy and into left field. Stovall to third. First hit of the game for McLaughlin. Runners at the corners once again. A good piece of hitting there by McLaughlin. That ball's off the plate. Just stuck his bat out there and drove it into left field for a single. South Carolina. Most junior was excellent as a sophomore in 2021. Pitched to a 1.83 ERA. Strike one to Alloy, the number three hitter for Arkansas. 0 for 3. Couple of ground outs. Serve to right. This could be trouble. It drops in in front of Petri. Stovall scores an RBI single for Alloy. Arkansas leads six to two. Petra was playing deep there. That was a long run he had to make. And everything seems to be going right now for the Razorbacks. Side to Diggs. We talked about this Arkansas offense earlier this afternoon in the first game of the doubleheader, Kip, when Coach Van Horn had said last night, you know, they've created innings, they just haven't finished them. Doing a better job here in game three. Three hits in this inning after the leadoff walk. They've got two already in. Headed towards the gap. Jones gives chase, bounces up against the wall. Two more will score for Arkansas. Two run double for Kendall Diggs. it open here in the seventh. A great piece of hitting here from Diggs as he just takes that fastball that's out over the middle of the plate, drives it to left center. You know, we talked about the bullpen being a little bit light for South Carolina. South Carolina desperately needing the first out of the inning here, let alone getting three. It's Nolan Sousa at the plate. Yeah. Sousa's one for three. Reached on an error and scored a run in the second. Doubled in the fourth. Struck out his last time up in the sixth. 0-2 the count. One and two. Get 
Diggs leads off second. Sousa, one of the two Hawaiians for Arkansas. Van Horn said it's been fun having them. Fayetteville, of course, a lot different than Hawaiian Islands, but they appreciate the way they go about their business. Real up front. Hulk strikes out Souza. First out of the inning. Another good game for Peyton Holt. He's been on base twice, hit by a pitch and scored a run in the second, grounded out in the fourth, an RBI single his last time up. He was on base four times Friday night. A couple of singles in game two earlier this afternoon. On base twice in this one. Utility guy that's played a lot of positions for Arkansas. Blocked by Reeves, but Diggs takes off for third. This is on the wild pitch. Runner on third, one down. Peyton Holt. Van Horn says he brings a little attitude to the program as a football player in high school. When Juco, just an athletic kid who's now full-time baseball, 23 years old, doing a nice job, fouls that back. Two and two the count on Holt. Diggs leads off third. One down here in the top of the seventh. That's a foul ball. Hancocks have the infield in. for back-to-back -back strikeouts. We'll do it again. Casas. Diggs will score, an RBI single for Holt. Continues to do damage against South Carolina. He's just been so impressive, Kip. This is his 22nd start of the year. He played 39 games. It's amazing to me that he hasn't started all of them. I obviously don't follow Arkansas' yeah. season. Well, you do South Carolinas, but it seems like that's a pat you'd want in there every game. Yeah, no kidding. Well, it's just, you know, it, it, it's the ebbs and flows of the game, right? I mean, look at Ethan Petrie, All-American. is, you know, hitless this series. He does have an RBI ground out, but you know, he just, just hasn't had it the, for uh, two and a half games now. And, of course, he's still probably going to get another at bat or two this game, and you just never know, but it's uh, – it, it is funny how that works. That skips in, knocked down by Reeves. That's why, you know, it's so tough. I mean, I, I tell my young players all the time that I coach and my, my two young boys is, is the, control the controllables. Control your attitude, your effort, your approach. And uh, if you trust the process, you have to surrender the result. And uh, it's very tough to do, especially as a hitter in baseball.
two and two the count on Ross Lovich. Man, no matter how hard you try, no matter what whatever you're trying to accomplish, it's you, 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 it's just out of your hands, you know. And, and you have to be able to just train properly, obviously, but mentally be prepared, physically be prepared, do whatever you can to help your team win. And uh, you know, it's. Uh, it's a team sport played by individuals, and um, it's, it, can, it can be very tough mentally at times. Holt takes his lead off first, three and two the count on Lovich. One down in the top of the seventh. It's ball four. First and second for Arkansas. Jack Wagner due up. Here comes Coach Williams. Big inning that Coach Van Horn was waiting for, a five spot, and they're not done. Jack Wagner at the plate. Here we go, man. Wagner is 0 for 3 to pick up an RBI on a fielder's choice in the second. Scored a run, popped up in the fourth, and grounded out in the sixth. Tarleton State to Arkansas. If that's a left, Jones is there. Two down. Arkansas is batted around here in the seventh. First at bat for Will Edmondson. Remember, Parker Rollins was batting ninth. Let off the inning with a walk, and they brought in Edmondson to pinch run for Rowland. Coming on is Jones. Gets Edmondson. Now then he's 0 for 2. Bounced into a double play in the second. Flat to right field in the fourth. One no the count on Lee Croy. Tamman's reached on a walk last night. Earlier this afternoon, two run single and a walk. Here we go, Will. Can reach for the first time in this game. Ground ball to short. Aloy on the backhand. The throw is high. They get Lee Croy. Went in awkwardly at first. And we hope he's okay. Lee Croy down for the moment. saw that high throw and I, I think he just tweaked his ankle a little bit there. He saw the high throw and he thought about sliding to be, get underneath it. That's really the only time you ever want to dive into first base or, or there he was trying to slide is you know, a lot of times you see guys do that, especially in their um, 
lower level baseball where they try to dive into first base to beat the throw and you know it's always said you're not going to be faster diving than you would be just running through it if that were the case you'd see world athletic you know athletes sprinters diving across the finish line Kevin Casas is 0 for 2. Fly out to right field and left field. A solid game earlier this afternoon. Reached three times. Walked, was hit by a pitch, and singled and scored a run. That one misses. Two and two the count on Casas. This guy's first collegiate triple last weekend at Florida. Grounds to the right side, the shift was on. Two down. Third baseman Souza is playing on the right side of the shift. McIntyre is looking for a one-two-three inning. Have to deal with Lee Ellis. Ellis is one for two. Struck out in the third. Doubled and scored a run in the fifth. had a single and a walk and a run scored earlier this afternoon. Double and a run scored in this one. Kip, both he and Brindling, guys who have been on the bench for most of the season, they've provided an offensive spark just in this doubleheader. Yeah, they have. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of question and, and we're wondering, you know, is, is something going on with Brewer? And we know Brewer hasn't been swinging the bat as well as late, but I, I really didn't think we'd see a change, but that change that Mark Kingston's made uh, in Brindley has, has certainly been a spark. He's, he's played really well for South Carolina, and um, you know, he roped that ball to right field in his last at bat, one hop to double to right field off the wall, and got an RBI double. It seems like so long ago, you know, that made it three to two, I believe it was. And, it's a very good ball game in the bottom of the fifth. And so you still got to play all nine innings, though. I mean, I, I can remember playing Arkansas my freshman year, 1998. We were at Arkansas, and we were winning by 10 runs going into the last inning. It was the first game of a doubleheader, and it was two sevens. And they scored 11 runs, and the 11th run score was a sack fly to beat us. It's the first out recorded that inning. It was crazy weather. I mean, it was like a blizzard out there. It was it was really nuts, but you just, you just never know. There's you know, there's outs. There's not time in baseball, so you still got to play all nine innings and you know, keep going. Well, Ellis keeps it going with a two-out walk. That'll bring up Austin Brindling. Now four for nine on the season, that's 444. Flat to center field in the first, walked and scored a run in the third. An RBI double his last time up. Hey, Mr. Sam, there he is. No gas, no brakes. I don't know why I used to think it was all gas, no brakes. He says no gas, no brake, powered by sandstorm. Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> Got a chance to go see Mr. Sam in between games, get us some chicken. Oh, it's good, chicken on a stick. Look at that, it's unstoppable sandstorm warriors. He certainly doesn't believe it's over. Oh no, oh no, I just, that's the first time I think I've ever seen him and he's not waving the flag or the towel. He's 
pointing out to right for Austin Brindling. There goes the runner, Ellis. Well, you know he had to do some business last night. Almost 8,000 in attendance. I think there were fireworks after the game. Did you stay for uh, the fireworks, Dave? Yeah, How was I watched it? Them. They were nice. Were they good? Okay. I tried to get home. Had an early morning this morning with the 10 U Owls team. My youngest son Sumter playing, and we had a nine o'clock start. And I think tomorrow morning we'll have an eight o'clock start. McIntyre strikes out Brindling. Big spot in the seventh for Arkansas. Stovall was part of that inning. Singleton scored a run. He's one for four in the game. Popped up. Reeves gives it a look. Stovall had that season ending injury last year. Didn't get to play in the South Carolina series last May. South Carolina. They weren't on the schedule in 2022, I don't think so. This is his first matchup with the Gamecocks. It was excellent as a freshman in 2022. He stepped it up in the postseason at 500 in that Stillwater Regional and made the all-regional team. Then 360 at the College World Series. Led the Razorbacks with 10 ribbies. That five-hit game against Auburn and Omaha. Marlott strikes out Stovall. One down. You know, it's amazing. We talk about the consistency of Arkansas and, and all the trips to Omaha for them and, and just how deep the Southeastern Conference is. And I mean, if I'm not mistaken, last year that was LSU, right? The national champions? Right. And, and you know, here here they are, four and twelve going into the day in the conference, defending national champions. It's uh, what a program they have at LSU, and, and uh, it's it's hard. It's hard to be good in this league, and that's one thing. South Carolina, even if they falter in this game, to be able to and not able to come back, they're still five hundred in the league. They're right there, high RPI. They're in a good position to make a late season run, and and. You've seen so many teams do that over the years. It's all about getting hot at the right time. You know, think back two years ago, Ole Miss, and they're currently 5-11 and 11, right in the league, and they really had to battle at the end of that season just to get in. Just to get in. You're exactly right. I watched that on uh, ESPN uh, a couple weeks ago, that story. Uh, I it mean, was great, yeah, wasn't it? It was great. I watched it as well. That's grounded foul by McLaughlin. I know it's interesting about Arkansas. They're currently number two in the country. And Coach Van Horn told me on our call that he feels like they haven't even played their best baseball, that it's still ahead of them. He said, honestly, don't feel like we're playing great right now. We haven't played that great all year. Ground ball to second. Noland tires McLaughlin two away. He just said, you know, we haven't pushed these guys. We're kind of cruising along, but we want to make sure we have our feet on the ground at the end of the season because last year, he said, we were smoked with injuries. We want to do everything we can to win a division or a conference, but if it doesn't happen. We just want to make sure we're good at the end of the year to play longer. Yeah, and I think that just comes with his experience. You know, he's seen, he knows what it's like to win an SEC championship in the regular season. And, you know, not many times does that SEC regular season champion move on to win a, a college world series and uh it, it's just a it's a short condensed season but it's uh it, it's a long haul you got to be there for for the long haul and there's a good play again by casas over up here and they can uh, win that series if at all possible strike one and cole messina Cole's been on base twice, was hit by a pitch in the first, an RBI double in the third. Struck out his last time up in the fifth. 
Did he go? No. It's Danny Cricks. Count evens at one and one. Cole was recently named to the Buster Posey watch list for the second straight season. Team leader in extra base hits. Won the count on Messina. 292 hitter, 10 homers, 34 runs batted in. It's ball four. It's a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the eighth. Base runner for Ethan Petri. Tough game for Petri. He's 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts. The average sitting at an even 300, 15 homers, 39 driven in. Got that 39th ribby earlier this afternoon. First game of this doubleheader. Big swing behind one and two. It's fouled off. Petri still leads his team Kip in most offensive categories and struggling a little bit, but he should come around pretty soon. Oh, Too yeah. good of a player. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and like I said, I mean, we're. We're talking about the, just the last two days. Yeah. I mean, how, how things are. It's um, you know, the top pitching staff in the country. Absolutely, and mo most are all really good hitters. I mean, they'll they'll drop a 0 for 20 in a heartbeat. It's just it's it's, it's part of the game. I mean, it, it's just uh, it's difficult. I mean, it's um, there's a reason why I, I, I do believe it's the hardest thing to do in all of sports is, is hit a baseball. I mean, it's. Uh, you know, what else can you do in a sporting event and fail seven out of ten times and be considered successful? You know, I mean, that's so hard mentally. One on one's down. Here's Parker Noland. Takes a strike. Noland is one for three. Struck out in the first, singled in the fourth, grounded out in the sixth. I should tell you that Wilms Meyer is in center field now for Holt. A defensive change for Arkansas. Holmes Meyer got the start in center field last night. Another one of those transfers coming over from Missouri. One and two the count on Parker Noland. It's another solid series for South Carolina. Pulls that one foul. Chases on for the souvenir. Got it. It was after that Not one. showing off the speed up yeah, there. It was.
One and two the count on Parker Noland. Cole Messina leads off first. Will McIntyre on the mound in relief of Brady Tiger. Up the middle, Aloy. Messina is safe at second. Nolan will be at first, first and second. And one down for the Gamecocks. Take another look. Yeah, good job of hitting again by Parker Nolan and almost a really good play there. I think that was his only option. I don't know if he could have gotten enough to be able to get Parker Nolan at first base. And Lloyd just a little bit of a, a bad toss over to him. Never know, that could start a, a long inning for the Gamecocks. Again, there's no time in baseball. They can turn this thing on. We've seen this team come back before and just want to continue to see quality at bats and do something to try to ignite the crowd and get them going. The pinch hitter is Blake Jackson batting for Kennedy Jones. Jackson had that pinch hit double in the ninth inning on Friday night. Certainly someone capable can deliver a spark. Transfer from Charlotte. And he pulls that, and it's a fair ball headed towards the corner. Messina rounds third, he will score. An RBI double for the pinch hitter, Blake Jackson. Gamecocks get their third run of the game. that breaking ball there and Jackson turned on it. Good piece of hitting there, one out, runners on second and third. Gamecocks within six. This is Dalton Reeves. He takes low. Reeves wearing number 44. Used to wear number 32 anytime he had a choice growing up and at PC. In honor of his Uncle Jay, who wore 32 at PC, passed away from brain cancer in 2012. 32 wasn't available. They'd already given it to Polks. He's wearing number 44. Find a way. Find a way. Four. His dad's number was four. His brother Sawyer always wore four, and he wore 44. Honor their father. Fly ball left field. Lovich runs out of room. Hank Aaron, of course, wore 44. They've always been Braves fans and Aaron fans. One to the count on number 44 for the Gamecocks, Dalton Reeves. Second and third, one down. Nolan on third, Jackson on second. He's got a foul as well. 
Reeves is certainly making McIntyre work. Yeah, he is. There's a quality at bat here from Reeves. And, and, you know, like I said, there's no time in this game. And, and South Carolina can get another hit or two and a bomb. They're right back in it. Even a bomb here, they're back in it within three. Off of the pitcher, McIntyre ricochets to Soval. Nolan scores, gives Reeves an RBI. It's a nine to four game. Ball's hammered right back up the middle. I think that hit the back of the rubber maybe. I don't know if it hit McIntyre. Can tell if it's here, first and third, one out. Down five. Here's Talmadge Lecroy. Fly ball left field. Lovich has to come in. Jackson scores. Sack fly for Lecroy. I think the Arkansas bench may have thought the runner tagged up a little bit too early at third base. You see another pinch hitter here, Dave. Tyler Causey will pinch hit for Casas. This is a 253 hitter, four homers, 21 runs batted in. He's got plenty of power. Long ball here would make it a two run game. There's a strike. His last home run was March 23rd against Vanderbilt. So homered in the finale at Ole Miss. Two-run homer against Winthrop was his first as a Gamecock. The other one against Longwood. Transfer from North Carolina, senior from Fort Mill. Hammers that to right center. Wilmsmeyer back in front of the wall. Will make the play to retire. Hasn't pitched in a while, Kip. His last appearance was March 16th at Ole Miss. A couple innings against the Citadel on March 5th. That was his best outing. No hits, no runs, and three strikeouts. Pitches inside to Kendall Diggs. Come on, Fox. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Right out of me. Right out Looking back at the scores in the SEC, Florida did end up beating Vanderbilt to get one win in that series. Vanderbilt wins two out of three. Florida won that game six to two today. Yeah. Quinn gets ahead one and two on Diggs. Gamecocks have the shift on for Diggs. That misses outside. And Georgia's down two to one to Ole Miss in the top of the seventh in their second game of a doubleheader today and the top of the ninth. LSU down eight to four against Missouri on the road. Yeah. Popped him up. Left side, Jackson in left field. Makes the play. Jackson, of course, pinch hit for Jones and takes over in left. Come 
There's Nolan Sousa. Coach Van Horn was kidding with Sousa and Aloy, telling them that they have to help him get the next great Hawaiian. Yeah. 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 Arkansas becoming a destination for Hawaiian ball players. Quinn strikes out Sousa. Two away here in the top of the ninth. Yeah, that's a good little slider there from Quinn. Oh, and they see a steady diet of change-ups there potentially, especially there on two strikes, but Quinn, another good slider. First at bat for Ty Wilmsmeyer. Entered as a defensive replacement previously. Peyton Holt. Good. Good. Now, I don't know if Gamecock fans remember, but last season that doubleheader they had against Missouri, that 21 inning doubleheader, Wilmsmeyer really took one for the team. Came in from center field. Tossed the final five innings of the game yeah. for Mizzou. Ultimately surrendered that walk-off base hit from Ethan Petrie as South Carolina earned the sweep, but they were out of arms. 21 inning doubleheader. He was huge for Mizzou, had multi-hit games in both legs of the doubleheader. Five innings on the mound. Right back to Quinn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Drake. A one, two, three inning for Drake Quinn. We'll head to the seventh. Exciting young player. I think will be a fan favorite here, Kip. Him, Just watching him do that backflip. Yeah, you gotta love the old out. Ozzie. That's a pretty sweet backflip. Yeah. Yeah. The Gamecocks take the field before the top of the first. Two no the count on Ellis. 3-0. There's a strike. 95 from Wood. Throws hard. Four by Ellis, three and two the count. Well, I think you'll see another fastball here. Down four, or rather up four if you're Wood, you're, you're going right after him here. That's a fair ball past McLaughlin. Ellis motoring around first. He'll slide into second with a leadoff double here in the bottom of the ninth. Second double of the game for Lee Ellis. He's exciting, Kip. Yeah, he is. That's a great piece of hitting there. I mean, that's 95. He inside outs it. It's a great piece of hitting. Gamecock producing when given the opportunity. Lee Ellis taking advantage of it. Brindling, fouls off the first pitch. Had 
has been a defensive change for Arkansas. Jared Sprague Lott, we haven't seen all series, is at third. He's the Richmond transfer who's been the primary starter over there at third this season. Two and one the count on Brindling. It was one for three. Flat to center field in the first. Walk and scored a run in the third. An RBI double in the fifth. Struck out his last time up in the seventh. Two and two the count on Brindling. Kingston gave him the start in center field last night. They thought he did a really nice job. Did exactly what they were hoping for. Got on base, got that hit, made a nice play in the outfield. Said he's a contact hitter, Kip, and maybe the team needs another contact hitter in the lineup. That's why Brindling is in there. Well, and it, I, I completely agree from that standpoint. I mean, you, you've got a team that's I think South Carolina struck out, what, 14, 15 times on, on Friday night. But again, Hagen Smith had 11 of those. So, um, but a team that definitely has been striking out a good bit this season. We do want to get as much contact in there as possible. I think right now Brewers just kind of getting the, I don't know, the wrong end of the stick. I mean, I, I, I don't feel like Brewers really deserve to lose his job, but and I think we'll certainly see him back in there, but good gosh, how do you not play, keep playing Brindling? Watch outside. I mean, I know you normally want a DH to have some pop and some power, but Brindling may end up having to, you know, play because I, I do think that the, his arm in the outfield could be an issue. Grounded to first. Laughlin takes care of it himself. Ellis advances to third, one down. It's a one out RBI opportunity for Cole Messina. Cole's well, been on base three times in this game, was hit by a pitch in the first, an RBI double in the third. Struck out in the fifth, walked and scored a run in the eighth. Go into the count on Messina. Takes his lead off third. Yeah. Seen it in 292, 10 homers, 34 driven in. To the left side, Aloy. Unable to make the play at first is McLaughlin. Messina will be safe. Ellis scores. The Incocks are within three. He got to it really good there, but just kind of spiked the throw. Almost looked a little bit nonchalant, but that's how Aloy plays. You know, just very smooth. Doesn't look like he's going through, uh, exerting a lot of energy there, but bad throw, and Gamecock's still fighting to come back. It's an E6. First error of the series for Arkansas. Ethan Petrie at the plate. Oh. 
It's popped up. Sprague a lot in foul territory. Two down. Hawks down to their final out. Parker Nolan due up. Twice scored a run. Continues to produce for South Carolina. Yeah, his job here is doing anything he can possibly do to get on base, to get that tying run to the plate. Tying run would be Blake Jackson. He's on deck. Owen to the count on Noland. Arkansas fans in attendance getting loud. Called strike three. Wood gets Noland. And Arkansas has defeated South Carolina nine to six. They win the series two games to one. This game, nine runs, nine hits, one error for the Razorbacks. Six runs, eight hits, one error for the Gamecocks.